Oh, hey there. Hey, listen, at School of Motion, we use After Effects every single day. And we were wondering, how fast could we make it go? If money were no object and we had an army of PC building geniuses at our disposal, what kind of system could we build? What components would go into it? And frankly, which pieces make the biggest difference? And finally, how much would all of that cost? So to find out, we enlisted the help of our friends at Adobe and then worked with Puget Systems, a high-end PC builder based in Seattle. And we asked them to build us the ultimate After Effects computer. We also brought in director Mike Petchy, who is a Puget Systems partner, to shoot this to make it look a lot sexier, which is why I look like Depeche Mode threw up on me. You might be wondering why we flew all the way across the country to build a computer in Seattle. Well, we wanted to find out just how far you can push After Effects, and we needed a total expert to help us. Puget Systems fit the bill. Puget Systems is a custom workstation manufacturer, and we believe that computers should be a pleasure to purchase and own. They should just work. They should get your job done and stay out of your way. Having an actual badass, high-performance computer actually will allow you to stay in your creative process and do what you do best. After Effects is a MoGraph Swiss Army knife, and it can take a lot of horsepower to get the most out of it. We had our audience run a benchmark developed by Puget Systems to get a sense of how fast those artists' machines were running. And then we asked Puget to try and beat the highest score. But before they could attempt that, we wanted to know how to approach building the ultimate After Effects machine. There are some things that are kind of generic. Um, every computer is going to have a power supply. Every computer is going to have a motherboard. And those core components, we tend to not deviate too much. And then there's other things, the processor, the video cards, a lot of times storage, those things are really dependent on the program. And every program is different. We have to look at each one of those individually and figure out like, okay, how does the software actually use the hardware? So what do we need to think about when building a computer for After Effects? What you really get out of PC is you get the choice of the components that are going to go into it. Because Apple, you have a choice of like four CPUs uh, versus with us, you could have you know, hundreds of CPUs and then we dial that down to the four that are the best for After Effects. And it'll be different for the best CPUs that are for Premiere. Andrew and Jason, two engineers who actually work on After Effects, confirm this for us. A higher core CPU speed is better than getting the one that has the most multi-CPU capabilities. For the processor, you want the processor that has the fastest single core performance. So if that means going with a 10 core rather than a 16 or something, that may be the case. Most of your RAM usage is going to be from RAM preview. So every frame you render, it's soaring it into RAM. And it does eventually write it to your disk cache. But it's fairly slow to do that, and it doesn't always write all of those frames to the disk cache. So having more RAM just means less frames that you're going to be re-rendering. The drives we normally recommend is about a 500 gig SSD for your OS and programs. It's just a standard SSD. Then we tend to do a either a one to four terabyte media drive. And then a third drive will be an NVMe and that's dedicated for your disk cache or scratch or you know that kind of stuff. The GPU and video acceleration in general, especially across Adobe products, um, in some places it's very fleshed out. And then there's other ones like After Effects and Lightroom actually, They're, it's fairly new. And so a lot of times, it's more important about having a GPU that is good enough. After Effects does not currently take advantage of multiple GPUs. So if you're talking about a single machine, then um, plow all your money into a single GPU. So we tend to not go really high on the GPU for After Effects. While the assembly team got to work putting everything together, Matt and Eric gave us a backstage tour, showing us where they build and repair the PCs for their customers. After install, we uh, bring it into QC where we you know, check everything over, find all of the little things like, you know, loud fans or things you can't hear in the warehouse. Uh, so come on in. So we have like a thermal imaging camera. So that's checking for hot spots. <laughs> yeah. Any issues that you can't see with the naked eye. It's like a bad 80s music video. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking it's like a max headroom or something. Whoa. <laughs> They also showed us their laser cutter, which made us realize we needed a name for this After Effects beast. And after all that work, it's an honor and a privilege to introduce to you Johnny Cash. Johnny has the highest specs of any system I've ever used, but do those impressive numbers actually turn into performance? We needed to run the benchmark to find out. All right, Matt, well, uh, we have a PC here, uh, Johnny Cash purring like a kitten, so uh, what are we gonna do now? So now we're gonna run our benchmark that we've developed here and we'll see exactly how fast it runs. Let's do it. And then we waited and waited 
and waited. The highest score we got from our audience was 971.5, which made my brand new iMac Pro score of 760.75 look pretty wimpy. As the moment of truth approached, Matt seemed pretty confident. 985. Well, Matt, you successfully beat the highest score that we got when we surveyed our audience, so good on you, man. Let's right. know what you're doing. Yep. Cool. Well, uh, this is definitely the fastest machine I have ever seen in my life, and I would like to play with it if that's cool with you. Yeah, yeah, poke around. All right, so normally this is very, very, very laggy uh, when I do this. So this comp has a ton of little layers to it, and there's a lot of expressions, a lot of things going on. Um, let me ramp preview it. It, does, it almost doesn't even have to render, <laughs> it just sort of plays. Having used After Effects for nearly two decades, I can honestly say that this system is by far the fastest and most responsive I've ever worked on. And what did this beast of a machine cost? Well, a lot less than my iMac Pro. It was actually a little depressing. I'm gonna have to get a PC. So there you go. Now you should have a really good idea of what you need to look for the next time you pick out or build a machine for After Effects. To recap, for now, you're gonna be buying a PC. Sorry, Mac fans, if speed is the goal, then you'll be getting really chummy with Windows. Processor speed trumps core count in most cases. If you're also using a lot of Adobe Premiere, it may be worth the trade-off to have more cores, but for AE purists, you want less cores, higher clock speed. The type of RAM won't matter very much, but get as much as you can, at least 32 gigabytes, and 64 gigs will let you cache more of your RAM previews, speeding up your workflow. Splurge for an SSD to work off of, and consider investing in an NVMe for your disk cache. You'll get a big speed bump from faster drives. Get a modern gaming GPU. No need to go crazy and spend $1,000 on a GPU meant for hardcore 3D work. You'll want at least 8 gigs of VRAM and more if you're doing a lot of 4K, 8K, or VR work. Make sure you click the link in the description of this video for a free downloadable guide that will help you build your own Johnny Cash. And if you're in the market for a new system but don't want to build it yourself, please check out our friends at Puget Systems. As you can tell, they do know what they're doing. I want to thank Adobe for their help. I want to thank Mike Petchy for making me look so sexy. And I want to thank you for watching. Happy rendering.